Recent research indicates that soybean meal net energy is higher in commercial settings. Why does this difference exist in net energy and productive energy in commercial swine diets when compared to book values? How does this improved understanding impact formulation strategies for nutritionists as well as economic considerations on the farm? Welcome to Feedstuffs in Focus, our podcast, taking a look at the big issues affecting the livestock, poultry, grain, and animal feed industries. I'm your host, Sarah Muirhead. This episode is brought to you by U.S. Soy, fully funded by the National Soybean Checkoff. Joining us today is Dr. Aaron Gaines, Managing Partner with Anatech LLC, and Dr. Bart Borg, Vice President of Feed and Nutrition for Passel Farms. You both spoke at the Iowa Swine Day pre-conference, and the title of that conference was Soybean Meal 360, Expanding Our Horizons Through Discoveries and Field-Proven Feeding Strategies for Improving Pork Production. Erin, your topic was focused on soybean meal net energy and productive energy in commercial swine systems versus industry book values. And, And Bart, you talked about the practical application of this new information relative to the conventional low cost ingredient formulation approach. So let's start our conversation today with you, Dr. Gaines. When was the first observation that soybean meal net energy is greater in a commercial environment? Uh, It really goes back to some work uh, that Dr. Dean Boyd uh, did within the handler system. Uh, They were actually doing a confirmatory study where in their first study, they found a similar similar energy estimate to what Dr. Stein found uh, in his laboratory, about 82 to 83% of corn. Uh, which I will point out, uh, Dr. Stein is finding a higher energy estimate than what uh, the current NRC 2012 is. But uh, when they did a confirmatory study um, within the hand order system, they found an estimate that's about 109% of corn. We talked to to Dr. Boyd about this. At first, they really didn't believe it uh, until more um, uh, studies were being completed at other locations, Uh, but uh, certainly a repeatable observation. Uh, as of late. What other studies or or data sets indicate a a higher net energy estimate? Yeah, so we've been involved uh, directly with uh, one of the studies that was conducted at CP, uh, and then there's been four other studies uh, completed as well that uh, we've had uh, some involvement in, either directly or indirectly. Uh, But uh, it's been repeated in in five locations. or sorry, five studies, four locations uh, in commercial research facilities. And then more recently, um, U.S. Soybean Board um, did a collaborative study with the mash offs that are finding a higher energy estimate as well. So, Dr. Gaines, why do you think the net energy estimate for soybean meal is is higher in a commercial environment? I think our current working hypothesis is that uh, there's some bioactives in soybean meal. And it's really uh, a function that under commercial commercial conditions, there's a higher pathogen load. And perhaps some of these bioactive molecules are allowing more energy to be used uh, toward growth when that pig's under some type of stress or like an immune challenge. Based on commercial experiments, what soybean meal energy value should be used in practice in your opinion? Yeah, so uh, I've had the opportunity to kind of pull some of my colleagues out in the industry um, that are in the pork powerhouses. And if you look at kind of the average estimates that's being utilized currently, it's about 97% of corn. And I would say about half those producers uh, have done their own studies to validate uh, those estimates uh, internally. But uh, there's definitely been upper movement of the soybean meal energy value for a lot of uh, pork production systems. To what degree do you believe the industry is already moving to a a higher net energy level? Well, based on kind of that that survey, I would say at least half uh, or more have uh, increased uh, that energy level. Then at the Iowa Swine Day, when Dr. Stein reported that his lab finding a higher uh, energy estimate for soybean meal, that certainly ought to give people uh, the motivation to to reevaluate their soybean meal energy level. With this new data uncovered over the past few years on soybean meal, what opportunities are there now regarding swine diets and nutrition programs? Bart, you want to jump in on that? Sure. Um, I think there's three things, really. There's um, uh, with the 
the net energy um, um, component, I think there's there's definitely some formulation and recalculation that the nutritionists need to consider on how they're formulating. I think the the uh, information that's been shown to uh, reduce that summer weight dip is important and and that also is uh you know would would take on some need for reformulation uh limiting some ingredients um putting minimums on some such as as soybean meal um and then the third just considering the the bioactives um and just watching that so that um, as there are components there that we'd want to uh, consider uh, putting different formulation specifics on at different times of the year possibly or during certain health um, outcomes that would be important. So how, how does the information that Aaron discussed impact nutritionists, um, say relative to their formulation strategies, um, that kind of thing? Yeah, I think two things. Um, once again, there's um, opportunity and need um, if you take on the the higher net energy content to recalibrate uh, lysine to energy uh, ratios. Um, there's some nice uh, a nice tool that is available uh, offered by PIC that that will help in that um, that recalculation. And then um, there are also can be some interesting uh, plays within formulation uh, against ingredients as the net energy content of soybean meal may increase, just uh, if formulating to a minimum net energy content where, where relationships of one ingredient uh, to the other may be valued slightly differently. So when we look to capitalize on soybean meal and its value, what are some of the challenges that might come with reformulating diets? Are there, are there any tools available to help nutritionists overcome these challenges? Yes. Uh, PIC has offered up a tool, um, uh, you know, that is outside the formulation process that allows for a nutritionist to uh, select what level of net energy uh, soybean meal would be relative to corn. Um, it would maintain then the actual SID uh, lysine percentages, but based on that, that uh, change in, in corn, soybean meal net energy to corn, uh, recalibrate the lysine to energy ratio that can then be used in formulation. Outside of that, there's opportunity to do that through spreadsheet form and, and uh, you know, do your own. But uh, again, that PIC tool is a nice, nice help. Always great to have a tool that can that can help. Uh, what kind of impact do you think um, this will have on producers bottom line? Well, in the modeling that, that we've done of, of just using the minimum soy um, and in some cases, maximum levels of DDGs and uh, maximum levels of, of uh, crystalline amino acids. We've seen in, a, in an environment of $350 soybean meal and, and uh, I believe we were at $4 corn. So these numbers are always moving a little bit and need to be recalibrated. But um, uh, when modeling a one pig um, uh, situation, uh, so not considering uh, potential mortality changes, it, it uh, was a, a revenue change of $1.92 per head. If you consider the added saleable pounds by modeling a, a group and considering the, uh, the mortality uh, changes that have occurred, that increases to uh, about $2.80 a head. So it can be significant. Um, uh, it also, though, um, it is a moving target, which, uh, you know, all financial models change every day as, as corn and soybean meal and, and uh, market price um, of, of what we're producing changes. So it, uh, it is something that you want to keep your eye on and, and know where the boundaries are. As we look to wrap up here, a question for both of you. Um, Aaron, I'll start with you. For producers and nutritionists, what would you say are the key takeaways from this discussion? As I stated earlier, about half the industry has increased the energy value of soybean meal 
already. So if you haven't looked at increasing your soybean mill energy level, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, if you've got the ability to do that within your own uh, facilities and validate some of the previous estimates, that's even better. But there's a lot of good resources out there already, uh, published studies to help you, um, whether that's commercial research facilities or some of the work that Dr. Stein's done at his laboratory. Uh, but uh, don't miss out on an opportunity. It's just like any other ingredient. Uh, we got to keep our formulation values uh, accurate. And so here's an opportunity to uh, make some adjustments to soybean meal energy level. Bart, what about you? Key takeaways? Well, I think one that I haven't mentioned before is that it's really important for nutritionists to, to um, not only be highly engaged in the formulation process, but also um, as we think about a revenue component of what that formula will drive that, that you know, you, you really get um, improve your your abilities um, and, it's, and it's not rocket science but uh, improve your abilities to really look at a, a more holistic uh, what is the net net difference in feeding cost and revenue gain from the formula that you're putting together so the other one that i would say is just new information's coming at us some uh, you know is is uh, information that we've been using for a long time and and keep an open mind to the the information that you're you're seeing come at you um and and you know the the sources of our thanks to dr aaron gaines and dr bart borg for their time with us today this episode has been brought to you by us soy i'm sarah muirhead and you've been listening to feedstuffs in focus if you would like to hear more conversations about some of the big issues affecting the livestock, poultry, grain, and animal feed industries, subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast channel. Until next time, have a great day and thank you for listening.